All right, guys, I'm here to talk to you today. It's a kind of a fun video about the 10 habits you can get into to make sure you're getting the most out of your gym session. So the gym can kind of be intimidating if you're new to the gym or even if you've been going to the gym, you might be in a routine um, that is you're feeling like you're just spinning your wheel. You're going to the gym, kind of punching in, punching out. You're not getting the most out of your workout. So these might be a reminder for you. They might be totally new to you, but whatever they are, they're my tips. Some might help you, some might not. And you might already have your own. You're like, Steve, I do this and it works really well. If that's the case, leave it in the comment box below, but make sure you've subscribed and liked this video before you leave a comment below. Getting back to wanting to go over these 10 things that I do. And again, these tips might not work for you. These tips might, you know, there's a couple on here that might not work for your schedule or that, you know, the gym that you work out in doesn't, you know, doesn't allow you to, to do a couple of these things. That's okay. Pick and choose from these and then kind of make it your own. I find that if I don't do these things, my workouts kind of are lackluster. I don't get as much out of them. But let's be honest, we're all busy people. We got a lot going on, so a lot of the times it's about getting bang for your buck. It's about honing in on your skills, about honing in, sharpening your sword, you know, before the gym to then going to the gym and, and really getting the most out of it, having the tools for success. So for me, I, I really like doing these videos, talking about habits. I really believe I'm big into schedule. I'm big into creating quality habits because habits at the end of the day are going to take you further in life than motivation. Extrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation, you guys don't know the difference. Intrinsic motivation comes from this like deep why, you know, go to the gym. You want to be healthy, you want to be better for your kids, you know, it makes you a better person. That external would be like, ooh, that person tells you you look really good. You have really nice muscles or you have a show and you need to get on stage. So uh, motivation, it comes and goes. It's important. It's an important factor, but your habits, your non-negotiables, the things you do every day and you don't even have to think about that. Depending on what you read, it's gonna tell you, you know, 66 days for a habit, you know, there's different literature out there, it's gonna tell you different things. But the reason we wanna get into habits is because it no longer takes any kind of self-control. We go through those things, we do them, almost automatically. So we want to get in the habit of that, of doing things automatically, like showing up to the gym at the same time, which is my number one thing to do. Train at the same time each day. That includes actually waking up. We talked about this in my morning video. If you can train in the morning, I recommend doing that. Training in the morning is great because it's going to release endorphins. You're going to feel great. It's going to set the tone, set the freaking tone for the rest of the day. If you show up and you kill your workout, you're more likely to kill everything in your day. The other reason I tell people to work out first thing, because if you wait till five or six o'clock, everyone and their dog has an excuse for why they can't go to the gym. And it's usually a pretty good excuse. This happened or this, you know, your kids, you know, work, stressed out, this needs to get done. Usually all good excuses. So you can talk yourself out of it. If you wake up before you look at your phone or before you do anything else, you're already moving. And set the tone for the rest of the day. Set the tone to win the day, which will win the week, which will win the month, which will win the year. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind and I can never get enough. I think that's how it goes. So I really think that if you're not working out in the morning, why not? Why not give it a go? Let's say you gotta be to work at 6 a.m. Waking up at 4 a.m. might not be doable, but if you're one of those people that you know you have to be to work at eight or nine, show up early, get there early. The gym is full of successful people at 7 a.m. in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning. Successful people that get that out of their way and then they're, they're moving on with the rest of their day. Rub shoulders with those people. You'll thank me later. All right, my number two habit to get into is read, 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 read. We are what we think about. So read or study or watch a video on what it is you're training that day. So let's say I got chest. Let's say, you know what? I just want to, I, I want to research new cardio. I want to research something. Knowledge is power, people. Knowledge is power. So let's just say you want to research on the topic of stretching. You want to research on the topic of myofascial release. I've been reading about that. You want to research the topic of how to get a bigger chest. You watch a video, you read an article, and what you're doing even subconsciously, now you're thinking about that. Now when you go into the gym, you're gonna pick up that little tip, oh, when I'm training chest, I'm actually gonna to try to touch my elbows rather than to just touch my wrist, because that's a lot of anterior delt, where if I try to touch my elbows, that's a lot of chest. All of a sudden, you're thinking about these things, and it's just cues now to when you're in the gym working out that you're automatically doing, and you get a better workout. So I definitely think sitting down and reading, studying, getting getting into this, this this place where you're prime, you're priming your mind for what your body's gonna go through. Everything we do in life, I think we do first in our head. So if you don't see yourself working out, you're never gonna do it. So prime yourself, see yourself, 
doing those motions, doing those exercises, foam rolling, doing everything you can, and then you're gonna get in the gym and you've already seen it in your head, now you just gotta do it. So I, I definitely think that's a good one. Number three, this kinda goes with number two, plan your actual workout. So what I mean by plan your workouts is a lot of times we go into the gym and it's chest day. Okay, it's chest day, well, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, maybe I'll do this, and all of a sudden you're wasting time, you're wasting that decision-making skills. Making decisions is an awful lot like training. The more decisions we make, self-control, that's what it's all coming down to. Making decisions is nothing but self-control. It's deciding to do this, deciding to do that, and, and not deciding to do the other thing. So self-control is gonna be a big one of those. The more we exercise that self-control muscle, the weaker it gets. So if you go into the gym, you know, if you go into the gym not knowing what you're gonna do, it's a whole lot easier to be like, oh, there's a lot of people here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. It's overwhelming. But if you plan out your workouts, write them down, in a notebook or, or shameless plug, fitness culture app, I'm going to be following my workout. I'm looking at this, I know what I got. Pull-ups, chest supported row, supine grip lat pull down, dumbbell pullover, seated reverse machine fly. I know what I'm doing, I know the sets, I know the reps, I even know the tempo, and I even have videos on what to do or how to do it. So I think planning out your workouts beforehand is a great way to get a great workout and to not feel overwhelmed when you walk into the gym. Number four, it all comes down to accountability. Number four, have a gym partner. I've been so blessed in my life to have some amazing gym partners. Chad was a great workout partner, he was a chiropractor. He didn't compete, so it was kinda like, you know, he. He, he would push me, but he didn't himself compete, but he was lean, you know, pretty much 24 seven, had a great handle on nutrition and training. He was a little bit older than me. Um, I would say I was maybe five to 10% stronger than him on everything except for biceps. He's, he just had strong biceps. And back, we were about the same. Jake, my business partner and my gym partner now, a lot of the times, He's a freak. He's a lot, lot stronger chest, back. You know, he's a 750 pound deadlifter, a 500 pound bencher. He's an animal. So I train with him. His goals are all more like powerlifting. My goals are, are, are more bodybuilding. So I might add on some more hypertrophy or I might not go as heavy on deadlifts, but you get the point. Train with somebody that's gonna make you better, that's gonna hold you accountable. And you do the same for them. Hold them accountable. Hey man, where you at? We got this today. Be excited for them. That excitement is gonna be tangible. If you walk into the gym and your, your partner's feeling low, feeling you know they've had a rough day, be that person that lifts them up and they're gonna do the same for you. So that's number four, get a gym partner, a solid gym partner. Number five, hydrate. Now I could have put this earlier, this list is in no real particular order, but you need to hydrate. The minute you're dehydrated, even a little bit dehydrated, your performance in the gym or in any athletic event will suffer. So. For hydration, I carry around like a hydro flask, a, you know, a, a, I, I drink about a gallon to a gallon and a half to, per day. A gallon to a gallon and a half per day if I'm training. It's hot outside, it's like 100 degrees here. I'm in the desert. I don't, you know, you don't maybe see as much sweat because it's evaporating faster in this dry climate. But it, when you're working out, you're sweating a ton. You need to replace the water and the electrolytes. Water, I recommend 0.5 to one ounce per pound of body weight. You know, I'm 215 pounds. So I need at least really 115 to 200, 215 ounces of water. So 0.5 to one ounce per pound of body weight. I carry around a water jug. It's a meathead thing to do. You know, um, I used to carry around like an actual water water jug. Now I carry around just a water, a big water bottle. But to be honest, I think going back to the jug, it's a great thing. You can mix some BCAs if you need some electrolytes in there, or there's some other drinks. We might even be having a supplement coming out that's gonna be perfect for hydration and something that's just nice to sip on. So hydrate before, during, and after your workout. 0.5 to one ounce per pound of body weight. Number six, this one's tough. And I never used to do it, but it's foam roll. Foam roll before and after your workouts. You need a foam foam roll. So what happens is we have all these muscle adhesions. Muscles should slide like this. They contract, they relax. Sometimes when contracting, they do this, and then all of a sudden we have all these muscle adhesions. So what foam rolling does is that foam roller presses on those adhesions and over time you hold it there for like 30 seconds and they're gonna slowly release, relax, and lengthen that muscle again. This is important for a lot of different reasons. A, it's gonna help with, with muscle re like repair because as you foam roll, a lot of blood is going to that area, which is obviously is gonna help repair that muscle, gonna get nutrients to that area. It's also gonna make you less sore. So if you foam roll right after a workout, studies show that you're less likely to have as much delayed onset muscle soreness or your DOMS will be lowered. That's a great reason to do it. Also, if you're tight and if you had muscle imbalances, so if I'm always just shortening my muscles, shortening my muscles, all of a sudden I have all these muscle imbalances. My prime mover is no longer functioning like it should be. My secondary muscle groups, you know, like, you know, if my chest is too tight and my triceps are having to take over, we, we ruin, I guess that's how you ruin a body, in my opinion. You ruin a body by you no longer 
longer have prime movers handling the weight that they should. And it's now, you know, you're, the antagonistic muscles can't do what they need to do. So you need to make sure when you foam roll, what we're doing is we're re releasing those muscles that are sore, that are tight. And that's gonna allow, whether it's an agonist or an antagonist, to make sure that they're doing their job and we're getting full range of motion and you're using the correct muscles for the correct exercises. So foam roll before and after. It's easy to just walk out of the gym, take 10 minutes and foam roll after. I typically only foam roll the body part I'm training that day before, but after I'll try to just get like a full body flush. Number seven, number seven, listen to the right music, plan your playlist. Now, maybe you don't listen to music and that's, that's fine. I love setting the tone. After I, I stretch, headphones go in and it's go time. I've now set the tone and I'm here to kick some ass. I'm not here to talk. My friendly face is, is no longer, I'm no longer smiling, making eye contact with everyone. I'm focusing on what I need to do. I might look like a dick, but I'm here. This is me time. Everyone else during my day gets, gets me, you know, business partners, sisters, friends, family. Everyone else gets my time, except for when I'm working out. That's me time. Sorry, I gotta give it my set. I'm watching the clock. Plan your playlist ahead of time. Have your go-to playlist. Maybe, you know, again, it's music that's gonna be uplifting. It might make you mad. It's a heavy leg day, some streaming music. So maybe have two sets of playlists. I have two sets. I have more of like a rap hardcore, like I'm feeling myself. And then I have more of a rock. Like I just want to just makes me angry. So anyhow, listen to the right music, plan your playlist ahead, which brings me to number number eight. After you have your playlist, maybe you're connected to Wi-Fi, put your phone on airplane mode or do not disturb. There's nothing that can ruin a workout like getting a text message. Because what happens? We hear that ping. And what's the first thing? It's human nature to want to reach out and look at it. It's urgent, it's pressing, it's in your ear. It's telling you, hey, I'm here. Ping, 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 text message. Ping, 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 alert, phone call. Turn that off. Turn that shit off, this is you time. So airplane mode, or turn it all the way off. You no, know, maybe you bring an old iPod in, I don't know. Or, you know, for me, I just put it on airplane mode and do not disturb. And honestly, that is one that I need to work at. So definitely, definitely, definitely can provide a huge difference in the gym. If you're focused, you're watching the clock, you're not looking at your phone, you're, you know, you're timing your rest, you're in there to do work. Number nine, do cardio after weights or plan enough time in between. So cardio maybe in the morning, go back for a lifting session, you know, two to three hours, at least in between cardio and lifting, if you're doing cardio before. I like doing my cardio after, um, if I'm going to have to do them at the same time. I, I train my weights with my weights, I'm primed. I have, you know, I've, I've taken my, my pre-workout or I've taken my BCAAs, I'm hydrated, I've thought about what I'm lifting, boom. Now I'm all that energy, all the, the glycogen, the, the creatine monohydrate, I'm putting that to use first for my lifting session. If you do cardio first, all of a sudden you're now, you've depleted glycogen, you're, you're tired, you're not there mentally, and your weights are gonna suffer. So I always tell people, weights first. Weights first unless you can, you know, you have three, at least three hours that you can wait in between cardio in the morning and then lifting. Number 10, this one's optional, but no, it's not. It's optional, but it's not. I would say bring your post-workout shake to the gym with you. And I know it's like, Steve, you know, like, you know, having the anabolic windows bull crap. You know, I'm not here to talk about necessarily, you know, what is scientific and what isn't with post-workout shakes. I know this is a time that your body needs nutrients. You've been sweating, you've depleted glycogen. Um, you, it's now time to rebuild and repair muscles. So a BCA shake, at least, you know, a protein shake would be my my choice with some simple carbohydrates. You might even wanna do creatine. I do my creatine before, but you wanna replenish all those nutrients, you know, get you in a positive nitrogen state, build and repair muscle, get you some glycogen to repair all of the glycogen, or get, get you some simple sugars to repair that glycogen that you've just used. Um, and then also kind of like, boom, you're doing everything that you should be. Worked out, post-workout, boom, now I'm, I'm not thinking about my workout or anything else. It's on to the rest of the day. If you wait and you gotta go home and, and you know and, and, and mix your post-workout shake together, you're now, I think, you know, you, you haven't closed that chapter of your day unless you've had your post-workout shake. At least that's for me. It's like boom, now I can close it, had my shake, on to the next thing. Last one, this is a bonus one. Sound the bonus alarm. Ding 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 ding! Bonus! Alright, guys, last tip, last thing I do. It's actually not part of the actual gym routine, so it's a bonus but I bring face wipes. And what I do is after the gym, I get a face wipe and I just wipe off my face. Cause there could be times I have meetings, I have to go run errands and I can't get home and shower right away. If you can't get home and shower, you get the, the dirt and the grime, all those people touching equipment in the gym and then you're touching it and you're touching your face. Just use one of these, wipe off. You can wipe underneath your armpits. Your significant other would really appreciate it. So, hope you guys like this video. Thumbs it up. Give it a subscribe if you're not. Did I say subscribe weird? Give it a subscribe, my channel. Um, and we do a lot more 
a lot more tips and we'll do some more workout videos. But let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see next. I'm off to go eat and actually shower. Adios. But let me know in the comment. Cotton.